bow guns, you know, the ones that you use to like soften tile and mm -hmm. stuff like that. If you get a heat gun and you set it on the number two setting and you hold the cat in front of it <laughs> and, and you, you run it up and down, then it'll um, remove the hair and you won't you won't have to worry about cat allergies anymore. You're like, what? Is, what did I just tune into? <laughs> Yeah. Well, you should have been here for the pre-show. All right, today, sharpen your sword. Well, this is a student of the gun. Well, it is, but it could be student of the sword because the sword and the gun, they're all arms. And AR, that's, uh, well, you can't spell arm without AR. You know that, right? You can't spell arms without AR. Oh. Um, <laughs> mind blown. You can't spell Africa without AR either. We just recently, we put the AR in Africa. <laughs> We did. We put the AR in Africa. I can't, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with with the uh, real men wear shorts. Real men wear shorts. Putting what? the AR in shorts. Africa. All right. So we got a Duracoat finished firearm of the week for you guys. We've got, uh, we are going to talk about the AR in detail uh, and whatever else it is we feel like talking about. All on today's Monday episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you cannot spell arms without AR. That is, that should be a t-shirt. Somebody is running and tripping and stumbling over themselves right now <laughs> to mm -hmm. get to. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. No, I actually stumbled across an article uh, written by, was it by Dean Weingartner? I think yeah, from Amelan. From Amelan.com. Uh, and they did a Freedom of Information Act search. And they came up with, they found the original classification. For uh, the no, it was David Codry. Oh, David Codria. Codria. Okay. Yeah, David Codria. Okay, good job, David. Uh, yeah, found the, he's the guy that wears sandals in his, in his, uh, in his profile pic. Uh, <laughs> have you ever looked at his profile pic? Yeah, does he have a cigar? He's got a cigar. He's got a, he's got a cigar and and and, and a, an adult beverage, and he's wearing his sandals. Bless his he, heart. He looks like a cigar. I mean, a cigar. A safari guide. A safari with sandals. Guide. There you go. Safari guide. So uh, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> a cigar file. He's a cigar file. Is what he is. <sighs> All right. I hit the button too soon or too late or something like that. But let's go. Oh, we've been promising you this. We, we, we've been talking about the Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week, right? Uh, and we said, hey, if you have a project, send us pictures. We'll share the pictures with the audience. We'll talk about your project. Well, none of you freaks took us up on it until recently. So we're going to do that today. Uh, if you are listening live on Discord, which you could be if you're in the student of the Gord, student of the discord if you're in the student of the gun discord you could do the gourd that. that's right Got this. Uh, or or you could be on fascist book at least for the moment i don't know how much longer fascist book is going to last why couldn't you have had that freudian slip like a month and a half ago i know because we could have done what? a pumpkin carving contest called student of the gourd <laughs> that's nobody would funny. do it Bull crap! Someone Actually, did it for free. Christopher one of, Romano one would of do our it. People did it. One of our people did it. We shared the pumpkin pictures. It wasn't Christopher Romano. It was somebody else. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. It's like somebody did it for free. Mm. Okay, yeah. wouldn't, we wouldn't charge people to be student of the court anyway, but still, no. saving that for next year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. So if you are live uh, in the Discord channel or if you're live on the Fascist Book channel, and you want to ask a question, go ahead and feel free to do that. And if it's pertinent, then, well, uh, we'll answer it. I had a dream last night. I had a dream that we set up a pistol class. We set up a, a pistol training class here in Wyoming. 
And and the time came and it arrived and and I was surprised because I didn't expect in the dream. I was like, I didn't think it was going to, it was already and people are already showing up and I don't have the manuals printed. So I'm just going to have to wing it. (laughs) And I mean, you don't, you've done this so much now. You don't really even, yeah, I pretty much could. I, I, I don't need the book. I pretty much could do it. But, um, and then it got weirder. So we do the normal, I would do the normal thing like, okay, everybody, you know, close the business, breakfast is at eight, you know, you don't have to be at the table, but we're eating at eight and you either eat or you don't, you know? So then Lemmy Kilmeister from Motorhead comes up to me and he's angry because he tells me that he's been eating. He's been eating. Ah, we lost him. Oh, I was also very confused. Okay, I wonder if he knows. Let's find out. Do do do. do Pause do, it. Do, do. I it's the right great thing about right watching now. the liveies. He's been. I wonder, I Dang, wonder, I was super I interested. What was eating. I mean, yeah, I know. I was super interested in what he was about to say, and it just dropped. It's like, what? What was he eating? Oh, come on, man. So I'm betting that the internet probably just went completely the F out. Yeah, it probably did. Because he is not back yet. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he there left. he Okay. Woo, look at that. I'm split between two screens now. Look at that. Oh. Well, you want to figure out what, what happened with him? Uh, he just said he's going to log out and log back in. Okay. Sounds like a plizzy plan. Sounds like yeah, I was just talking to, to we've got uh, Tristan. We, we have a few people live here, but Tristan Shinney's on with us. And um, we kind of started doing this year, yearly tradition with him and his wife and his kids of going to the lights at Temple Square here in Salt Lake City. And I, But I don't think they're doing them this year because they're doing construction down there. And so I was just letting them know. I'm like, man, too bad they're not going to be doing lights this year because we won't get to do our yearly tradition. It's like we live relatively close to each other, only a couple of hours away, but we only see each other like once a year when we go see the lights. Yeah. And Ruth is like running fast now. So. Oh yeah, she's a she's a quick little creature. Yeah, if you guys are if you're listening right now and you're not in the Discord server, jump on over there to the slash discord I just sent an email link directly to the newsletter list letting them know we're live. So if you're not on that list, then shame on you. But if you are, then you'll get the link. You can click it and go directly there. Uh, I appreciate you guys who do tune in live. Yeah. Steve, Hans, Lydia, thank you guys for being here. People on the what is, book. What is that, Ryan? Ryan's posting a picture in the Discord. It's a bird. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Widgeons? What the hell are widgeons? It's like a widget. It's this thing, is it but it's got wing, wings. Is it a winged pigeon? Yeah, it's a winged pigeon. Oh, that, yeah, that is a real thing. It's like a duck. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah. No. Quack. What did What did he say? Is he logging back in? Uh, do, 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 do. No, do, do, do. So cool. Zoom froze. We're going to log out and log back in. That's what he said with his mouth. Okay. But he's not here yet. So He is not back. You guys are just stuck with us. Sorry about that. But also, you're welcome. Don't so worry. So I had this idea yesterday. Go ahead. And I've, us I've, already, I've already bought the domains because that's how you start businesses now. You buy a domain. But I don't really want to. This isn't going to be a business that I'm starting. It's called the question I asked you, Zach. Did you like the daily ask or question in attic? Yeah. So it's like question fanatic or the daily ask. And the reason is because I've been told by multiple people that I ask very good questions. And so I was thinking, you know what I would like to do in my free time that I don't have? Make a question blog? Is Yeah, I would like to make this very simple blog. And actually, Facebook would be the perfect venue for this. But I want to get younger people involved too. So TikTok. it's not going to be on Facebook. But that's not a blog. It's a video thing. It's so, a web blog. So the the thing that I want to do is I just want to ask these random questions that I have because I have a whole question book. Like most most mornings when I wake up, I'll write down a question and then I'll answer the question. 
and that just stimulates thought and gets my brain working. And, and that coupled with a giant bottle of water makes me feel great when I start my day and a little bit of coffee too. And so I have this book of these questions that I've just thought of. And I was going through it with somebody the other day and they're like, wow, those are fascinating questions. And multiple people have told me that. So I'm like, well, what if I do this daily ask or question addict or whatever it's going to be called? The thing. Um, you guys that are listening live, which one do you like? Do you like the daily ask or do you like question addict? If you like, que- uh, if you like daily ask, type one. If you like question addict, type two. Type two. Because I'm betting yeah. people aren't going to know how to spell question addict. Because yeah. I don't even remember how to spell it. Question, A-T-I-C. It's like question fanatic. Good for you. And so there he is. So uh, I was thinking about that and that I would post those questions there and it would be, that's all it would be. It would just be the question and then the people that go, the viewers of the site who have the time to do so, they would answer their, they would answer the question and, and what they think about it. Jared, I hate to say, but yeah, TikTok would probably be the best way for you to do that. But there is, it's not written. It's got to be written. Why does it got to be written? Because I don't want to have to sit down and do it. It has to be schedulable. You can schedule it doesn't have TikToks. to be written. It has to be schedulable. You can schedule TikToks. Because I, I need to be able to sit down one day and schedule like 15 questions. You could do that with TikTok. You can? Yeah. You just, hi, Dad, what's oh. up? Um, can you hear us? Middle finger for yes, thumbs down can, for no. Can you hear me? Well, here we go. Yeah. We couldn't hear go. you before. So that was gay. Yee. It wasn't it wasn't Zoom. It was my whole freaking computer. Uh oh. Like it just froze up. The Maybe mouse time, the time mouse wouldn't move. It, and- I have a question. Have you been ignoring updates? <laughs> that face the face is No, up. no. Uh, a lot no, of times when, when I go to power it down, it says, Would you like to update then power down? And I'm and I'm like, Yeah, sure. sure go yeah. ahead and do that. I would check that, check and see if there's any updates. And- I, I really so, so you 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 cut out I was so interested in what you were about to say because you're like, Lemmy was eating yeah, and then it, was it, mad and it dropped. He'd been eating. And oh, I was okay. like, well, what was he doing? So he was, com- so he came up to me. Well, wait, da, 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 wait da, da, hold on. Okay. Let Zach do the thing. All right. And, and we're back in three, two. So anyway, Lemmy Kilmeister from Motorhead comes up to me and this is, this is the dream. So of course, and, and he's angry, he's mad. And, and he tells me, in his in his lemmy kill my voice we've been eating nothing but steak sandwiches for seven days or whatever oh what a horrible life and, and i said and and I, was, I stopped for a second and i got mad and i got mad and i was like look i told everybody exactly when to be at the table i said breakfast will be on the table eight o'clock in the morning if you're not there that's not my problem that is not my fault everybody else in this class was able to make it to the dinner table and eat. So don't give me any any crap there, Lemmy Kilmeister. And then I woke up I, and then I woke up and I thought that was a weird dream to have. Yeah, that's weird. That was weird. So but uh yeah, and in the class, in the handgun class, all the people who were there were previous attendees, previous graduates. Yeah. So even Lemmy? Now, well, the, the weird thing is, is, is he just showed up at the end to complain, <laughs> to complain about the steak sandwiches, about how he did, how he didn't, how I was all hoity toity up on my throne eating hot food and they were eating steak sandwiches. And I was like, what right. is wrong with implying a cold steak, steak sandwich? I was also implying that a steak sandwich isn't warm. I'd rather had a cold uh, steak sandwich. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, it, I don't know what was going on with my brain last night. But, I do. Uh, uh, so other- I. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, just real quick. The other day, I went uh, to the mall with my girlfriend and her mom, and we uh-huh. stopped to get lunch. And we there's this like little Philly cheesesteak place in the mall, and that was there really, is. it was really good. Oh, was it really good? Yeah. Good for you. We're talking about steak sandwiches. Continue. Uh, why are ev- why is everybody in the uh, in the the Facebook Live typing the number one in their comments? Oh, hey, Jerry, you got your answer. Because I'm number one. Dang. So yeah, there's uh, that's the most. So you were gone when I when I said this. Yeah, well, we were. Um, so I won't time. repeat you, it. But you I'll, asked a question that had a numerical answer. You, well, kind of. We we asked, Zach, Zach gave them numbers yeah. for we, options. We gave them two. We, there was two answers, and I said type one for this one, type two for that one, and people are oh, choosing okay. one. All right. Well, fantastic. Zach, should we get into the Duracoat Finish Fire of the Week? Yes, indeed. Before my computer freeze, freezes again. Yeah. All 
right. So we uh, we were talking about this. We've been talking about this. I said, hey, if you've got a really Gucci Duracoat project and you'd like to show people, well, show us. So our, our buddy Christopher Umana, who is very artistically inclined, uh, he sent in a picture of the Gladius that he did for the Badass Contest. And uh, Christopher... He's way more skilled than I am. He has more skill. He actually has an air compressor and the brushes and the air compressor brushes and stuff and like that. And a paint booth and all this stuff. Yeah. Probably. So he's able to take advantage of the the Duracoat colors just in the bottle. It, it's, I mean, let's be honest. It's way less expensive to just get the colors than, than it is to and the hardener and mix the colors in the hardener and then do it. That's way less expensive than it is to buy the Canon can technology, but you have to have the air compressor and the tubes and hoses and, you know, airbrushes and stuff like that. So if you don't want to invest in the airbrushes and tubes and hoses and air compressors and stuff, then just get the cans. But if you already have the setup, if you're already set up to, to, to airbrush, then just buy the Duracoat in the bottles, buy the hardener, and then don't mix it until you're ready to use it, and then go crazy. So uh, I don't know if Zach, do you have the picture up? Did you put the picture up of yes, I the did. Uh, of his Gladius? His Gladius depends on who. You, if you talk to someone from Europe, they say Gladius. Gladius. Uh, yeah. I kind of like that. Uh, but Americans say put the hard ah yeah. in there. The ah. That's because we're so happy they, about the, it. The colors that he used, and and if you look at the at the Gladius, you can see that he mixed some of the colors to come up with the the hue, and he used Duracoat burnt orange, uh, competition yellow, HK black, uh, number twenty one <laughs> white, uh, MC eight copper, or just a few of them, uh, and the the uh, the HK black was the badass color uh that he used so congratulations to him and uh, if you guys are looking at that and you're jelly oh did you hear what i just said you're jealous jelly. Uh, then you could do that you you could do something like that you could do something similar uh I, now i'm sure that christopher didn't become an artist overnight but uh there you go congratulations to him and thank you to him for sharing that and the reason that this all came about was because last Sunday I needed to I was waiting for somebody to show up at the house and I had 15 20 minutes to kill and I'm like okay I don't want to go start a project for 15 minutes and then stop so what am I going to do and I, you know what I haven't sharpened my sword in a while and I've got one of those sharpening pucks it's gray and it looks like a puck um obviously a I have a spider stuff? A spider, yeah, it's a, it's a sharp, it's a whetstone, but they call it a puck. Um, I've got a spider co uh, kit. The spider co sharp maker is the absolute OG for shizzle kit when it comes to sharpening pocket knives, steak knives, your toenail clippers, you know, potato peelers. You can sharpen scissors, just about everything in your house that has an edge. Except really big things, you know. If you've got an axe, uh, or like a axe sword, a question. you want to axe it a question. If you or a wood splitting mall, and that's actually what I wanted to sharpen first was I wanted to put an edge on the wood splitting mall because I knew the next day I was going to be going out to split some wood. But I, I said, "Question, real quick, ahead. Zach, is Christopher Umano watching us live right now?" Uh... I have not seen him comment and looking in the thing right now. What, you want to talk? Uh, you I want to talk? Believe he's talk about him behind his back since uh, he's not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, so just look while Dad's talking and then fill me in when you find out. Uh, he's not. No, I just looked. Oh, he's okay. not. Dang, I was going to try something new and let him talk on and through. You're going to ask him a question or something. Yeah, you're going to ask him. So any hooser, uh, I, I I honed the edge of my wood splitting mall. I did that. And uh, and I whipped out my Gladius and sat down on a on a uh, 
on a stool, on a wooden stool, and, and I, I, well, I sharpened up the, the edge of the cold steel gladius. And I thought, you know what? What the heck? I'm going to go ahead and, and post about that. So I, sh- I snapped a little photo, and, and uh, I said, hey, you know, sharpen your sword. And then Christopher's like, hey, you know, I did a, I did a gladius for the badass uh, contest. And I said, all right, cool. Send me a picture. So he did. And so here we are today. And that's how that worked. Uh, And for those of you that are new in our audience, you're like, when did this Cold Steel Gladius thing come about? (laughs) About five years ago or so, uh, we were we were Cold Steel all day, all the time. (laughs) Oh, yeah. We've spent a lot of time talking about the Gladius and how if you don't own one, you're super wrong and and you should just go ahead and fix yourself and buy one because you're like, Oh, I don't have that kind of money. Mm. Yeah, you do. Y- you waste, you waste it's more so than that thing cheap. costs yeah. every month. You waste more money than that thing costs. In fact, uh, they're so inexpensive that somebody we know that's not a millennial said that you don't even need to sharpen them. You can just throw them away, and get a new one. Ah, there, well, the retail price is forty-one bucks on on the on the Cold Steel website, and it says they're out of stock, and that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Buying too many of them. Oh yeah, you're like, how many do you have, Paul? More than one. More than one. I'm just gonna say that. Oh, uh, when these when these first came out, they were, uh, you could go into Academy Outdoors, and they were hanging on the on this racks for thirty five dollars, thirty six ninety nine, thirty five ninety nine, stuff like that, uh, and I was amazed because the the steel that they make them with it's a it's a high carbon steel, and it's the same steel I talked to this in way back going back way back when, it's the same steel that they use to make their regular swords, their nice super nice swords, except they don't put the well they don't put the finish on it they don't put the scrolling and the stainless finish and and all that um but it's the same steel same base steel and they're made in south africa and uh, that might be why they're out of stock i maybe (laughs) the maybe the vid got them yeah maybe so so long story short, if you didn't listen to me when I told you to go and buy one, then shame on you. <laughs> you should have. However, I am going to, uh, if you can't find yourself a cold steel, the next best thing is the United Cutlery Combat Commander Gladiator Sword. It's a Gladius. I've got one of those, and I really like it. I'm kind of torn between the Cold Steel and the United Cutlery version. Uh, I know that the Cold Steel has a really good blade, but the United Cutlery blade says that it's a it's a uh, 1060 carbon steel. So, uh, and those are only thirty eight bucks uh, right now online. So. You remember when I told you guys one time that when I get on the radio and recommend something, you better yeah. And if you're thinking that's I I like what Paul said and I think that's a good idea and sometime in the future I'm going to go ahead and get one of those. In fact, can you do me a favor, drop that link in the show notes uh so that Zach can post it, but I'm going to buy a couple of those before this drops cuz they're going to be gone. <laughs> They are, you know, as soon as sure as God made little green apples, when this goes live, people are going to be like, yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> and they're, they're on sale right now too. So yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Eh. So that's cat in the hat and that be that Duracoat because life is too short to have an ugly gun. 
Yes, it is. Life's too short to have an ugly gun. Uh, life is too short. Also, it could be really super short if you don't carry your gun. Yeah, if you leave it on your on your dresser or in your closet because you're only going to the store or only going to the movies or only going to the mall and nothing bad is going to happen there. Carry your freaking gun, hippies. And the best way to be dangerous on demand is to go to crossbreedholsters.com. Use the promotional code SOTG. Save some money, get a high quality holster, be a happy camper, yeah, and buddy. move on with your life. All right. It's coffee sip time. Yeah. Mm. I was just thinking earlier, and this is a callback to the dream thing, because I didn't get to say it when we were talking about the dreams. I don't I sleep <laughs> so deep that I don't remember my dreams. Mm. Although there's this thing, there's this um, app that I use when I'm trying to focus on stuff when I'm when I'm doing deep work. It's called Brain FM, and it has different um, different categories of sounds. And so right. you have focus, you have deep focus, you've got relaxed focus. Well, they have this sleep option. I tried it, and I had nightmares every single time. <laughs> <laughs> every time i woke up i was like wow that's not like what i never even remember my dreams i never have nightmares your brain so is i don't know what stimulated yeah i don't know what that sound is doing to my brain but it needs to stop it's, it's, it was so, your brain was super stimulated yeah there yeah. you go you know what i used to listen to when i would was writing articles uh, a bunch was uh instrumental music i yeah. cannot listen to i can't listen to regular music with lyrics because if someone starts singing i start thinking about what they're saying and it, yep. it screws up my train of thought but uh one of my favorite uh things to use was actually the soundtracks for the lord of the rings oh that yeah that's that'd be pretty good and yeah back way back when when we were living in ohio and i was sitting in my office on my desktop computer <laughs> right knocking out articles i would put the uh lord of the Rings soundtrack cd into the compact disc player that was in the desktop computer and the young people in the audience like what why how does that work there's a thing there's a place to put a cd in a computer <laughs> uh i bet you that that 90% of the, the Gen Z's listening to us don't have CD drives on their computers. Yep. If they have a laptop or they don't, most of them don't have laptops. They have tablets. You know, I don't and have tablets. Any, don't I don't have, have any drives. CD drives available to me. And that makes me sad because I have the original uh, DVD, CD. What the hell are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking, looking for, for a, a drive. drive. There's no drive in this. Yeah, no. You should have one on the iMac, Zach. There should be one on the side. There is? Oh, no, there's not. That's a new. Uh, You're lying never mind. to me. That's no. an old iMac. Wow, yeah. I'm just like, wow. Also, Jared, by the way, uh, do you have an, an adapter, like the HDMI to Lightning BS adapter? Because I want to hook up a second monitor to this iMac, but yes. the, I can't just stick a freaking... Yeah, I have HDMI a dongle monitor. that I can give you that has two HDMI ports. All right, please do that. Okay. Slash, <laughs> do you know how much they are? Cause, yeah. I, I have one for you. Okay, good. Uh, can we can we get back to the show now? No. So that anyways, is part of the show. So there I was at brownells.com shopping around for bargains. <laughs> Did you find a CD drive on brownells.com? Uh, and I found a CD-ROM. A ROM? What's a ROM? <laughs> it's randomized read, read omitted only memory. memory. Yeah, read only memory. There was RAM and there was ROM and they weren't the same things. You know, back in the old days, if you wanted to be computer savvy, you needed to know the verbiage. Like you needed to understand. Like in the 90s, when home PCs became popular, like really popular, people actually had to know. Like you'd go to the store and a guy'd like, well, how much ROM do you want? How much RAM do you want? How much? And people are like, all of it? A lot? A little? How much do I need? I don't know. And then the then the Martin Star geek guy would say, "Well, you can get this one here that it only has fourteen RAM, but by next year you're gonna need twenty eight. So you might as well just get the upgraded one right now because if you get this one, it's gonna be obsolete before you take it out of the box. So mm -hmm. I don't even know why you'd buy it. We should just throw these in the dumpster. I don't know why they're here on the floor. 
And now we're looking at <laughs> laptops coming with 64 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, and you're like, uh, okay. Remember the old days when you used to pop a, a disc in and it would go, and you could hear it yeah. spinning. You could hear the drive activate inside of your computer. <laughs> that that was got me through the first week of our Saratoga studio. You remember that? <laughs> we, we had got me a computer to do my work, and I had CG drive on it. And I found yeah. my old CD copy of Plants vs. Zombies. Yeah, there you go. I popped that in and for the first week that we were in Saratoga while we didn't have internet or anything. I just played Plants vs. Zombies at the <laughs> office, <laughs> hoping that the internet guy would Woo! show up that day. Glad you survived. Yeah, it was it, it was a good time. Yeah, but but where should you go for everything to go in on and around your gun? Brownells.com. Brownells.com, Brownells .com, right? Uh, it is a brand new month. It is the month of December. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, we've got a, a, a shot gat for you, uh, a shoddy, a blaster, uh, or whatever you kids call shotguns today. Uh, in the SDS Imports giveaway. And if you go to SOTG, that's Sierra, Oscar, Tom, George, um, or Golf, Tango Golf, uh, SOTG giveaway.com. You can sign up today. Maybe you could be a winner. Yes, indeed. Oh, you know who got uh, our buddies, uh, our buddy Charlie in Ohio, he has his hands in, in, in several pies. One of them is High Point Firearms, the other one is Barnall Ammunition. And uh, Charlie shared something yesterday. Uh, Barnall, they, they posted a, a, so they're like, hey, back in stock, Barnall 45 ACP. And I think it was the, the fascist Graham uh, sent him a, a nasty thing saying that, that you're not allowed to, to, to do that. Uh, like, um, it's a company website. It's an ammunition manufacturer Facebook page or Instagram page, but we're not allowed to talk about ammunition. How does that work? So if you go down the rabbit hole on brownhouse.com, they sell DVDs. So if do you they? do have a disk drive in your computer, you can get a DVD. If you still do have one, then they will hook you up. But uh, the Barnall... Barnall is the it's the top of the line is the highest quality steel case Russian manufactured ammunition that you're going to get your little paws on in America. So they've got it. You want it. Get it. End of story. And what they were trying to to tell the world is they had 45 auto back in stock. So uh, if you want the 45 auto, what is up with the, the Russians just have to be different, don't they? So check this out, Jared, standard 45 auto ACP ball. What is the weight of the bullet? 156. Grains. Oh, you, you no. <laughs> Two, come on. Tell me what it is. You know, right? Off the top of your head. It's 230. Okay. I just since said 156 the, or whatever up. I said. The, since the dawn of time, since john moses browning came down off of mount sinai and he gave the people the 1911 a1 right the 45 auto hardball has been a 230 grain bullet well you know what the russians said they said we don't care what you do we're going to make it with a 228 grain bullet <laughs> and i don't know if you're going to notice the difference in that two grains. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, no way, man. I'm not shooting 228s out of my gun. It's 230 or nothing. <laughs> uh, why? That's, it just it cracks me up. They do stuff like that. And the other thing uh, with 762 by 39, have you ever noticed that sometimes it's 123 ball, sometimes it's 124? Well, which is it? It's and the answer is it's whichever one we feel like. So just shut up. It's kind of like uh, Glock perfection. It's already perfect. Shut up and take it. So there you go. All right. I thought we would let you know. Oh, and the the green case, uh, seven six two by thirty nine, from Barnall is one twenty three. It's one two three. Yeah. 
In case you were wondering, it's not one, two, one, four. two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, six. That's you know what I says. heard the other day? I was listening to a podcast and they were interviewing a Rhodesian war veteran and he referred to the, um, the NATO seven, six, two by, thir- by 51 NATO as the seven, six, two long. He said, we use the seven, six, two long in our R one rifles and the in- communists were using the seven, I think he said the the seven six two mid or moderate it was kind of weird. I never heard of it referred to as that, but I guess you could. All right, it is Monday. It's time for me to be quiet and you to listen. So do that. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. We could talk about pirates. We could really go down a rabbit hole if we wanted to talk about 30 caliber versus 30 caliber versus 30 caliber. Because the uh, if you talk to people, the Russian 762 by 39 is not an identical 308. Because we know 762 by 51 as 308 and the diameter of the bullet being point. Three zero eight, but I believe that the Russian spec actually the bullet can be point uh, three zero three one zero. Zach Hall would know for sure, but uh, any hooser, you're like wow, wow, rabbit hole down there. Come on, come on back out with me. Let's get away from all that commie crap and uh, talk about the American rifle for a second. We've got an article here from AmboLand.com by David Kodria. Uh, we talked, we mentioned this at the very beginning, and I thought this was interesting because uh, they went down. Uh, well, they they went back in the wayback machine to when the AR-15 Sporter was a brand new gun and it was available for purchase. Uh, by the American citizen. That's right, the American citizen way back in 63. See, you've been led to believe by the liars uh, and the propagandists in the media that the AR-15 is a modern concoction and that it's only been within the last few years that Americans have been buying them and owning them and yada, yada, yada. Well, that's actually not true. It's a complete and total lie. you could have bought one. You could have gone to the Colt catalog in 1963 and purchased yourself an AR-15. And this is when you do the you, you do some braining right now. You do a little bit of brain work, and you're like, hmm. So that would be 58 years ago. So the Colt AR-15 Sporter has been around and available longer than most people are old uh longer than most people in my audience but but yeah exactly so you want to dive into the story it's from december 1st uh 2021 on mlan.com says original atf ar-15 classification refutes claim that rifle is not meant for civilians december 1st 2021 it says Quote, this responds to your Freedom of Information Act request concerning the following. One, all classification letters, or if classification letters were named in some other way, those records regarding model R6000 Colt AR-15 SP-1 Sporter Rifle, serial number GX4968, which was approved in approximately 1963 before the, before the Gun Control Act. And well, two, the second gun control. Yeah, the second one. And two, all classification letters for AR-15 platforms, platform rifles predating the submission to the ATF for the Colt AR-15 SP-1 Sporter Rifle. 
end quote. That was from Adam P. Sipple, Chief Information and Privacy Governance Division, uh, that notified attorney Stephen Stambouli on November 22nd in a response. It says, in response to your request, we have processed a total of two pages of response material. That reference FOI, a request was sent in May on behalf of firearms designer Lynn Savage. And something just happened to my internet. There we go. By firearms designer Lynn Savage. And it resulted in the production of a December 10th, 1963 letter from what was called for what was then called Alcohol and Tobacco Tax Division to Colt's Patent Firearms Manufacturing Company, Inc. This is the first such classification for the AR-15 and has not been published before. The FOIA request, it's uh, that's been in the news a lot lately, these FOIA things. And apparently, uh, just to jump off the article real quick, apparently the, a, the federal judge had granted the FOIA request and and now the FDA has to release all the the, the pages that they they wanted the fifty five years or something like that. Yeah, they wanted uh, five hundred pages a month is what they wanted to do, but they are apparently they're forced to send all that information by I think it was March of next year. So oh, so they so they can keep poisoning us until March, and then yeah. we people find out like oh, uh, the, I don't want that in my body. The FOIA request itself was prompted from a November 2017 article in The Atlantic in which the magazine, unsurprisingly to anyone familiar with its anti-gun bent, attempted to bolster a claim that these rifles were meant for the military, not civilians. Mm -hmm. uh, quote, Colt sent a pilot model rifle, serial number GX4968, to the BATF for civilian sale approval on October 23rd, 1963. It was approved on December 10th, 1963, and sales of the model R6000 Colt AR-15 SP-1 Sporter Rifle began on January 2nd, 1964. One critic of the article contended. Um, it, another quote from a, a different critic, I think, the or maybe the same one. The M16 wasn't issued to infantry units until 1965 as the XM-16 Echo-1 which you guys have seen on our uh, Saigon Some, report. Somebody might have talked about that. Yeah. Wasn't standardized. Can you drop that link to the uh, the video in the show notes, please, Zach? Actually, the, the latest one is who put the AR in Africa, and I have that rifle in my hand. Oh, yeah. Let me see it. So drop that one in there, Zach. Oh, you mean in the video. <laughs> no, in my hand. I in thought the video. you had it not, right not, now. Not I was now. like, oh, let me see yeah. it. Uh, so anyway, the M16 wasn't issued to infantry units until 1965 as the XM16X01 wasn't standardized as the M16A1 until 1967 and didn't officially replace the M14 until 1969. Oh, so, those are inconvenient facts. Yes. So you mean here in the really real real world that American citizens were able to purchase the AR-15 model SP-1 from Colt Manufacturing before the military bought it, the M-16? In fact, the purpose of the approval was for civilians. Oh, snap! So they were being sold to civilians first, question mark? There are several things that are interesting. Savage told Land News about the classification letter. One, it shows pre-Gun Control Act ATF policy on the AR-15 system. It also shows why the most likely reason an AR lower is considered a frame or receiver is that from 1962 to 1968, Colt marked the lower receivers with the information flat surfaces as the upper is round, meaning the regulatory scheme used by the ATF in 1968 to present is uh, to present to present is based a uh, present to Mothi. It's based Mothi. on what Colt marked pre 1968 and not the statute. Willfully Bingo. and knowingly. B. All right. There's there's a B I N G O. Yeah. Oh. That's the wrong one. Or is that the right one? So, what did we talk about last week? I talked about how redonkulous it is for for the B A T F E M O U S E to get all up their butts excited about. A, an oddly shaped piece of aluminum and I asked I asked you guys in the audience I said let's just 
just step back for a second and exercise some analytical thinking. What is the purpose of inscribing a magic number on a piece of aluminum? Is it to stop crime? Is it to solve crimes? And this is when we, we have to be realistic and say, mm, not really. Um, because up until 68, that requirement didn't exist. Okay. And when we're before in for the AR-15, because first of all, it didn't exist. It wasn't a thing. And before that, with the serial numbers, like before, we, we had a country for 150 years. We'd been manufacturing firearms on this continent for 200 years or more without the need for a government-regulated serial number in the guns. Like, yeah, but no, there was no crime or murder or anything until, uh, what, like 1935. That's when murder started, right? That's when crime started. There, weren't, there wasn't crime or murder on planet Earth until then. No. Let's let's if we put our analytical thinking caps on the only reason to require the inscription that the government would require the inscription of a number onto a piece of aluminum is so that they can control it so that they can control people who aren't uh, pre I don't know, not predestined uh, <laughs> who aren't criminals anyway. You say, well, no, but if a criminal uses a gun, then we, we find the gun and we run the serial number back to whom? To the manufacturer and then to the, then to the wholesaler and then to the retailer and then to the guy who bought it in 1987. And then we find out that it was stolen in 1997. And where does that leave us? Uh, well, I don't know. Where does it leave us? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be more important to pull fingerprints off of a gun than a serial number off of a gun? Because if you pull fingerprints off it and you take your fingerprints back to the, the crip or the blood or the gangbanger or the whatever, you're like, oh, yeah, that's that guy. But, of course, in America, it doesn't matter anymore because we don't punish actual criminals. You see, in the United States of America, we don't punish actual criminals. We make excuses for them. We let the vice president set up special bail campaigns to spring them from jail because it's not fair that, that, that they're in jail. But you, the guy who wants to, who's a citizen, the woman who is a citizen, who's not a criminal, you have to be controlled. You are not allowed to buy that object unless it has the magic number on it. And we put that magic number on a piece of paper and we call on the phone and we run that number and you and a, a faceless bureaucrat in an office somewhere will tell the guy at the gun counter whether you are allowed to make that purchase. Kind of seems like it's easier to be a criminal in America than to be a citizen, huh, Jared? Yeah. Because if you're a criminal, Democrats will make excuses for you. It's not your fault. It's systemic racism. So I, I really appreciate this article. I really appreciate uh, the, the fact that, well, that it, they did the work, that Mr. Savage and Mr. Kodria did the work. Um. Uh, we, we're running long on time, so if you want to go down, oh, he says, so let's just go down and read the first a couple of uh, paragraphs. So they were the first, they were first sold to civilians, question mark. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, I was reading the actual source letter. Um, I already started this one, but it also, he said it also shows why the most likely reason was the, uh, where they marked the, the, Right. By the uh, lowers, consider the frame of receiver. And then it says Lynn hit it the moves nail on, on the to, head. Yeah, Lynn hit the nail on the head. The current notice of proposed rulemaking reads as if there was just no way the ATF could have known that the AR-15 split modular design was a thing. Back in 1968, the agency promulgated the definition of frame or receiver, post-dating the classification letter of the AR-15. 
And that shows why they should have originally known that they were making a definite or what they were making a definition for. That's another thing that they're doing. And this is good. Thank you, Jerry. Right now they're playing this little game. Uh, they're like, Oh, well, we had no idea when we came up with this, that there would be a top and a bottom receiver where we had no idea that that was going to be the case. And, and so we need to modify our regulations and we need to come up with a new memorandum, uh, yada, yada, yada. Remember when they were going to try and make upper receivers gun, they were going to make those guns too. They tried to do that. They floated a letter around remember they were screwing over some of our friends. They're like, oh, that you can't sell that. Mm -hmm. That has to have a certain number on it, too. And, you're, and they're and they're like, what are you talking about? 50 years ago, you said that this is just a gun part. It's not the receiver, the bottom parts. Receiver. Well, yeah, but we didn't know people would be able to push the pins out and separate them. And according to this letter, they absolutely did. They 100 percent did from the very beginning. So, Jared, would you say that that currently makes them liars? Yeah. Uh, so somebody in the ATF either is a 100% liar or doesn't know the history of this. There's more than firearm. one somebody. There's many somebodies that are complete liars. Um, it says, it says it, it's, it's because my thoughts... It's, it is because my thoughts that they sent two rifles Tremble offered... One was an automatic rifle, and the other was modified rifle that had uh, made to not be a machine gun, a semi-automatic version. So the ATF said, yes, this modified automatic rifle is not a firearm under the NFA. Ergo, the M16 or the AR-15 Sporter SP-1 is not an NFA item. It is not a machine gun. You see, that's the other thing they're trying to do now, too, Jared, is they're trying to alter it, and they're like, oh, well, we had no idea back then that people would be able to put these high-capacity magazines into fully semi-automatic. Remember the, mm -hmm. the retired general who said, this is a fully semi-automatic gun? We had no idea. We're going to have to reclassify these rifles as NFA items. So there is the letter from the ATF that is uh, that was sent on November twenty second, twenty twenty one, is indeed embedded on here in this it's article. In the article. So I highly and then recommend the original you go to the show notes and click the link to go read that because the original one from nineteen sixty three is in there as well. So you can it's read everything. There. Yep. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we're going to wrap it because I'm, I'm I'm surprised Zach hasn't been like pinging me. Um, I, I've been putting huh. things in the notes. Okay, thank you. So the long story short is this. We are living in a history of arbitrary rule. The ATF is an unconstitutional organization. And when I say unconstitutional, that means they have no constitutional authority to do what it is that they do. When you go outside of the constitutional process for lawmaking and just issue memorandums or statement policy statements. We amended our policy statement. What does that mean? Well, it's not really a law, but we'll arrest you anyway, because we have this overarching authority. Like, where did you get that authority? We gave it to ourselves. You did. Well, isn't that special? You just gave yourself the authority to on a daily basis, reclassify lawful commerce? Yeah, pretty much. Thank you to David Codria and thank you to Lynn Savage for doing the, do the work and the due diligence and proving and demonstrating that the ATF are liars and pretty much all that they do is arbitrary. It's based on whatever they feel like doing today. Well, we don't like citizens having these guns, so we're going to reclassify them as machine guns. What? No, you don't get to do that. Uh, I mean, unless you as American citizens want to be ruled by, well, by bureaucrats and liars, 
If you think that you were born a United States citizen so that some bureaucrat in an office somewhere in Washington could arbitrarily rule over you, well, then, you know, if that's how you want to live your life. So this is how you like to live your life. <laughs> uh, if you're axing, Zach, which, uh, which video? I got it. Okay. Yeah. It's the real men wear shorts. Uh, and it is the one about we put the AR in Africa. Yep, that's the one. AR-15, XM-16, Echo-1, Real Men Wear Shorts, Episode 5. Episode 5. And as a as a completely selfish, uh, self-serving note, if you freaks haven't uh, experienced or watched or uh, viewed the Real Men Wear Shorts series yet, either on Full 30 dot com or youtube dot com or facebook dot com or internet dot com you should do that it is available on internet dot com right now it's called real men wear shorts or rwms for short yeah and if uh, you search it, real fun. men wear shorts the videos will not come up so search rmws oh really how do we yeah, do that it's not in there oh, oh that's kind of crazy hmm. so any hooser Long story short, uh, thank you very much to Ammo Land and the guys at Ammo Land for making that happen, uh, for uh, doing the due diligence. And now you, as a citizen of the United States, have the information. You have the facts right there in front of you. And you can choose to live by facts or uh, you can just, well, punt and allow the a, a, faceless government bureaucracy to rule over you and decide how you can live your life from day to day. But I'm of the opinion that Americans were not put on this, this earth to be arbitrarily ruled by faceless bureaucrats in a city thousands of miles away. And you say, well, who cares if you think that? Well, you know who cares? the founders and this little thing called the constitution of the United States of America. That's where I get my authority. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the AR 15 is the American rifle, AR American rifle right there in black and white going all the way back to 1963. The Colt AR 15 Sporter SP one is the American rifle and it was made, designed, and purposely built to be sold to the American citizen. Not police, not the military, you. And you are a beginner once, but a student for life. Indeed. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, Head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life. I just want to say it's in the tags. What? What? The real men wear shorts thing. Oh, oh yeah, it's it, it, yeah, but you can't search. It doesn't. It doesn't work. All right, sweet. I'll 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 replace RMWS with real men wear shorts. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and take. I've got nine twenty three. If we could take uh, ten minutes, so I could refill my coffee. Okay, sounds good. We can do ten minutes. All right, ten minutes. See, see you guys. In ten minutes. Approximately minute. ten minutes.
And we're somewhat back. All right. Yeah. So while we were in between episodes, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I went and uh, I went to the bathroom and on my way back. Good I, job. Uh, thank you. Good boy. I grabbed a couple of vitamins. Did you need to make? Go ahead. I don't get that one. But anyway, here's my point. Is uh, a little while ago, I bought, because they were on sale, some of those one-a-day men's 50 and over vitamins. A bottle of those. Yep. And I figured, eh, that's probably about the same thing as, like, the regular ones. And like I said, they were on sale. So, one morning, I took them after I'd had a questionable night the night before. And then mm-hmm. they, I suddenly got, like, an upset stomach, and I needed to throw up afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was like, well, it's probably just because of my questionable choices the night before, right? Didn't mix well. Yeah. Well, about a week later, I was like, I haven't taken my vitamins lately. I went back in there. I had had nothing questionable. Alcohol. Uh, yeah. I took it, swallowed it. About five minutes later, I wasn't sick. I just felt like, huh, I feel like I need to throw up. Is that... Do you have any idea why that would be? Uh, yeah, your pro- your body probably doesn't like it. Yeah, uh, so I end up throwing the whole <laughs> bottle away because it's like I, I took the vitamins two times. Both times I had to throw up afterwards. So it's like, well, guess guess those just don't work for me. Has anyone else had that? Uh, I, I got the I got the not fifty plus gummy ones, and I've been taking those every day, especially since I've been sick. Oh, okay. Well, there you and, go. And uh, do I think it was a shot of OJ? Do, 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 That's an option. Do, do, do. But yeah. Yeah, I've been taking those ones, and I've been, they've been fine. Also, they're like they're like gummy bears, so that's also a nice little mental thing. Up, oh, shouldn't have that one up. I should have the little lower third. I should have that one up. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Part of what part of what my uh, attempting to fix my diet thing has been is breakfast is. A B12 vitamin, a regular vitamin, a hair and nails vitamin, and a uh, protein shake. That okay. is my breakfast. I was gonna say you, you need to you need to fill your stomach up with the pro the protein shake will fill your stomach up. Exactly. Like, yeah, that's my. Yeah. Breakfast. Hey, look who it is! Hello, hello, chicken. Hello, goat. It's the one that everybody showed up to see. That's right. For anybody who's not it's looking at the, the screen, beautiful one, baby Ruth. Hello. Take a dead nini out so I can hear you talking. Take your hello. Out, hello. 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 That's my that's my coffee. Well, Is she it, needs some. She needs to pick me up. You're all done. Oh, you all done? All done. See, oh, getting hello. Ready a, getting ready for a nap. Hello. Oh, but it's only nine thirty. Say hello, Paga. Hello, baby. Now I got up at five forty-five this morning. What? Why are you up so early? Are you crazy? Say I am. Boop. I love you. Paga loves you. Do you like books? No, all done now. No one all done now. <laughs> you know, you know, say anything under the microphone. Bye bye. No, I'm done. <laughs> bye bye. I'm done. Goodbye. Now I'm done. <laughs> And now I'm done. I'm okay, gonna clip that, and that. I'm gonna clip that, and that's gonna be the end of all of our episodes from now on. <laughs> that's Goodbye. Bye now. I'm done. They love you. Bye bye. Love you. Oh. Love Woo-hoo. you too. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> bye bye now. I'm done. Bye oh. bye now. I'm done. <laughs> so here, here's something else we can talk about in the meantime. Uh, Sammy and I went uh, to her company's Christmas party last night. Remember when I was talking about Oh, that's about how right. Yeah. They had... Um, the comedian. Yeah, they had the comedian. So uh, three years ago, they had Jim Gaffigan. Yeah. Uh, last year, the year before, Iglesias. they had Gabriel Iglesias. Mm-hmm. And this year, they had Ryan Hamilton. Ooh, was Ryan good? He was actually pretty funny. He he was very entertaining. Well, but good. he's not Jim Gaffigan or, or Gabriel Iglesias. That's all right. And he, here's the really funny thing, right? Uh, and, and they're recording all this, so this is—I'm not like telling any secrets. 
uh, after after that he was done, the CEOs came up and were doing the whole like, "Hey, our company's so great, and we couldn't have done it without you." That whole thing. Yeah. Um. And at the at one point they were like, "Yeah, and thanks to Mr. Ryan, uh, what what, what was his name?" They couldn't remember the guy, the name of the guy they thanks just to Ryan. Hired. They literally yeah. said Ryan. Uh, what's his name? What's and his I know name he, again? I know he was backstage. Like, fuck you guys. <laughs> Fuck you people, too. Yeah. It's like, you hired me. <laughs> but it was a good show. I enjoyed it. But bye now. I'm done. Bye now. I'm done. Bye now. I'm done. Goodbye. I'm done. Goodbye, I'm done. <laughs> Goodbye now. I'm done. That's very, that is very done. cute. <laughs> Bless All your done. Friend. Oh, that's funny. Well, good. I'm glad that you had a good time, and I'm glad that you were able to to go to the Christmas party. Your mom's Christmas party at her work is the 18th. Oh, cool. Yep. Hey, Jared, when's your Christmas party for your work? Good question. Yeah, when's the full 30 Christmas party? No, we haven't scheduled one yet. Yeah. We should do that. Oh, you still have time. Yeah, it's, it's only the third. I can't believe it's December already. It's yeah. crazy. I know. I was telling your Uncle Dave. I was talking to your Uncle Dave on the phone the other day. And, and I said, bro, I said, I'm at this point in my life where I'm ju- I just start getting comfortable with the current month. And I look at the calendar, and it's the 29th. Yeah. You know? I'm, I, I look, I'm like, fuck, it's the first of them in, in two days. That's funny. And I, I just started getting comfortable with this month, and, and now it's about to change. Fuck. Ugh. How dare <laughs> months continue? Uh, did you pick up one of those uh, gladiuses? Uh, yeah, a couple. I probably okay. should get one of those. I got one for you. Well, don't oh, worry about you. it. Yeah, Jared did it. Because, sirs, God made little green apples. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be gone. Those things are going to fucking sell out. People are like, how come they're all gone? Are they going to regular sell out, though? Nope. How come they're all gone? What happened to them? I, I don't know. What happened to all those books? How come they're not 99 cents anymore? Because people heard about them. <laughs> I don't know. Why aren't they? Why are they? Where are they gone? Uh, that's funny. And and I wouldn't I would have never I didn't realize that that was going to be a thing until we started promoting the the political thought book. Yeah, because we we kind of screwed ourselves. We should have bought them all. We should have gone on on Amazon and bought them all for ninety nine cents when they they would have been they would have been out of stock. Yeah. And then we can't yeah, yeah we don't we can't matters. tell people that though now they know that the reason that everything's out of stock when we talk about it is because we buy it ourselves <laughs> <laughs> we well, bought thousands of gladius swords no Cause, actually cause we yeah i i bet you it's it's got to be the the covid import bullshit because those are made in south africa yeah and that's they're probably right. like oh we can't bring them in because the, the the swords might have the vet on them Oh, we've already established that it doesn't transfer. It does not. It, does it doesn't not. happen by. Yeah. There, there, there's probably a Conex box full of swords sitting off the coast of New York. I want to buy that Conex box. Yeah. Did Don't you? I, I was looking at the price of shipping containers this morning. Freaking insane. It was like 10 grand for a container. Insane in the membrane when they were $2,000 five years ago. Yeah. Well, you just like two and a half years ago. Yeah. Insane in the membrane. Insane, insane. Got the brain. Speaking of David Spade, uh, Sam and I just watched, uh, rewatched Emperor's New Groove the other day. Did you? Did you guys? Oh, ever did you? Give, give a damn about Emperor's New Groove? Oh yeah, we watched it. Yeah. We we rented it and watched it a bunch of times. It was a, it was a cute movie. I think it was quite frankly uh, an underrated movie I agree. when it came, when it came to Disney movies. They didn't, you know, I don't think they gave quite a, gave it quite enough the push that they give some of the other movies, but there was nothing wrong with that movie. Yeah. I, I remember if that was one of the ones you disliked for some reason. No, I didn't dislike Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. David Spade. You are, you are uh, incorrect. I like that movie. I had a great cast too. David Spade, John David Goodman, Spade's uh, funny. Patrick Patrick not Emperor's Warburton. New Groove, Ryan Marker. Patrick what? Patrick Warburton. Warburton. Patrick. Right, Have you were, seen my are acorn? Are we ready to talk about stuff? No. Yep. 
Did you so take I, my I acorn? Have I have a 60 minute drive after this. You owe me a new acorn. Okay, fine. You owe me a new acorn. Oh, by the way, Zach, I have a Hi. painting for you that you need to ship to somebody with the name with the last name Brooks. Oh, I, th- I thought you were saying like, I I have one. A painting. Well, I mean, you could keep it. I'm gonna give it to you to ship to to Mr. Brooks, yeah. and then from then on, it is completely your decision what you do with it. Why didn't he pack it up and take it with him? Um, it was very full. It was yeah. very full. Okay. I need to send him his Christmas present anyway because I meant to give it to him when I helped him move, and then I got some. All right, cool. So, right. moving on. Let's go ahead and do the show. All right, Dad. We be talking yeah. about... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say I almost knocked my freaking cup over my computer. I'm going to move it to the other side of my desk. That would have been awesome. And now that the water's out of the way, Dad, you can go ahead and get us started in three, two, one. All right. You know what I'm looking at online? I'm looking at swords. I'm looking at swords online. And you know how they say, you know, the regrets thing? <laughs> no regrets. Not even one letter. Not even not even one letter? Are you sure? Um, we were talking on Monday about the United Cutlery Gladius sword, the Combat Commander Gladiator sword. Uh, back in the day when I was a a writer when I wrote for magazines. Oh, I was going to say, you still do write. No, when I wrote for paper magazines, when they used to kill trees and, and <gasps> squirt ink on the dead tree and make magazines. Oh, I can't believe they did that. I wrote for a knife magazine called Tactical Knives. And uh, I got to tour the United Cutlery facility in Tennessee. And I got to see all the because united cutlery got the contract to make the reproductions of all of the lord of the rings swords did you know that yeah yeah so united cutlery they made they made reproductions of every one of gandalf's of andrew the sword of the king of gondor uh the hobbit the sting one the bilbo sword sting the the beard guy's axe the all that stuff right and i got to yeah gimli's axe all that stuff and i got to see firsthand the the originals and one of the things that uh whoever it was the production company who made uh the production company made lord of the rings do you know what's peter jackson's production looking up now whatever jackpete.com no uh (laughs) They sent United Cutlery. Oh, I was proud of myself for that. One. Actual movie props. They sent them genuine props from the movie so that they could make the repros as close to the originals as humanly possible. Would it be the Saul Zayanitz Company? I uh, know. Then there's I, also New Line Cinema Wing and Nut. Wingnut Films. Wingnut and New Line. New Line and Wingnut. That's it. So anyway, so New Line, they sent them original movie props and i got to hold them see them i got to i got to put on the glove oh, man. of the witch king of agmar the the metal glove thing you know all that stuff my point is this the the regrets back then so i was obviously i wrote articles and and uh i was very close friends with the marketing people of united cutlery and they said if you oh if you ever want any of these swords just let us know we'll give them to you at cost whatever and I and at the time I was like, uh, I don't need that. I don't have to have that. Well, then United Cutlery got purchased by a different corporation, <laughs> and now the people that I knew, who were the marketing people for United Cutlery, don't work there anymore. <laughs> so if I were to call them up and say, "Hi, I'm Paul Marco," they'd be like, "Who are you, and what do you want?" <laughs> so I could have had the sword, the Andrel. Uh, sword of the king of gondor for cost back then which i don't know what would have been it wouldn't but it would have been less than it is now less than retail yeah and but i didn't and i just kind of like ah, I, don't, I don't have to have that i don't need that like, <laughs> oh man it's kind of like going into a, a gun shop and seeing a $99 M1 carbine and thinking, ah, I don't need that today. I'll, someday I'll get one. Did we play the video opening already? 
I don't know. Did no, we? we have not. Oh, no, let's go okay. ahead and do that. I was trying to figure Shut out up. where to put this in the notes. Yeah. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right, thank you. You're too kind. You're you're just too kind. You're too kind. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> I was noticing that there is, when it comes to television and the cold open, there is no hard, fast time rule. Because that's what we obviously do. If you guys don't know what it is, that when we talky talk, before the intro music, that's called a cold open. Uh, watching TV shows, especially modern modern shows, current shows, uh, just about all of them begin with a cold open. The Office is probably one of the most famous ones for that. The Office made it a standard. If you ever, if you go back to the seventies and eighties, even when you watch a TV show. You sat, you're like, oh, Facts of Life comes on at eight or Who's the Boss comes on at eight or, or TJ Hooker comes on at eight. So you would run and turn the TV on and sit down on the couch and they'd go come from commercial and generally they would go right into the opening credits, the song, da, 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 the family, you know, the family ties opening. Well, then this little thing called the cold opener started. And the cold opener is they just go right into the material before the opening credits. I don't know why they decided to do that or what the logic was, or maybe they're like, hey, people are skipping the opening credits and we don't want them to do that. We want them to be there for the intro credits. So we're going to give them material up front. So if, if they don't get there, they'll miss it. And they don't want to miss it. It was... It was actually The Office. If you watch the episodes of The Office, Jared, you're an Office fan, right? Yeah. They standardized the cold open. Don't you believe? Was that the first one? I don't think. I, I don't know. I They're not the first ones to do it, but they made it. See, the cold opens in The Office were some of the best yeah. you would ever watch, right? I did like it, yeah. So people, they train the audience. They're like, you don't want to miss the first 45 seconds or the first minute because it's going to be funny. The chili See, thing the, might be the most famous skit from the cold office open. ever. Yeah. The the chili. It's one of the, it's one of the best. It's, 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 it's what I, th what I do best, you know, um, the, the gym pranks, the, all that stuff. Right. So I was watching a show uh, recently and I noticed that that there sometimes I would do what we just did. I'd be sitting there and I'm watching and I'm thinking, we're pretty far into this. Have they done the opening credits yet? And then, and, you know, 30, 45 seconds later, they go to the open. I was like, wow, that was a long cold open. That was like two and a half minutes. So uh, the reason I say that to say this, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You are welcome. Who do you think now, you are, if, Maui? Yeah, the, if you would like... Thank you. Um, if you'd like to ask questions and you're in the Discord or in the Fascist Book Live, you are cordially invited to ask questions at this time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we do this thing every single week. It's called Brownells Bullet Points. It's brought to you by this little company called Brownells. And it has an opening theme. All right, Jared, I have a question for you. Did you unpack your ugly Christmas sweater yet? I haven't found it. I've been looking. Mm. I need to just buy one of these. I don't have an ugly Christmas sweater. 
I don't think I have a sweater anymore. What? Uh, yeah, I. But, I don't wrong. know when, what year it was that this became a thing. Uh, the ugly Christmas uh, sweater I, thing. I feel like that was an early two thousands thing. It, it's been and a thing for stayed. a long time, but it used to be just Christmas sweaters, and then time passed and people realized that their parents and grandparents would dress them in these ugly Christmas sweaters every year. And so then they turned it into a, who could be the, who could find or make or acquire the ugliest of the ugly Christmas sweaters. Oh yeah. They leaned into it. That, yeah. That's the thing is they, they're like, you know what? We're going to take something that was a joke. We're going to lean into it. Yeah. And now people are going to like vie for competition to the most outrageous because yours has light up lights right yeah mine's a dark yours, fader yours is yours actually has christmas lights that light up yeah oh uh, people love so, mine everywhere so what, every time i wear it they're like oh, i like that one i love that so brown elves uh right now at this moment in addition to having everything to go in on and around a gun you already know that they actually have magpul ugly christmas gear in stock on sale they have the official magpul ugly christmas sweater and they have the official Magpul Ugly Christmas Beanie 2021. Apparently, they like do it. one a year. Well, uh, technically, those go around a gun. I mean, yeah, they go in and on and around a gun. So, if you guys would like to get those, if you like to get your hands on them, uh, I would tell you this that uh, you probably, if you want one, you should probably get it immediately because I'm guessing that they only have so many, and when they're gone, they're gone. You can you can apply the Cradova to this, bro. If you can't spend, if you can't afford the nineteen bucks for a hat, if that's going to break you and you need to go just put it on credit, hat. don't get it. Just call me and I'll, I'll give you a hat. Okay. <laughs> if you need, if you need a, if you feel like I kind of want to do it just to be that guy. It's like to, twenty bucks. I'm going to finance that. If you need to finance your nineteen dollar Christmas hat, just call me and I'll send you a hat. Okay. I'll send you a hat and we can we can be happy. <laughs> so there you go. I thought since it's that time of the year, uh, I thought, you know, what the heck? Let's just do something fun. We don't have to be serious, super serious. Uh, oh, right now they are using uh, a promo code RTC. Uh, $30 off orders of $300 or more and free shipping if you use the promo code RTC. Romeo Tango Charlie. That's what's going on right now. Uh, and it goes until the 5th. So, ladies and gentlemen, tis the season to be jolly. Ha, 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 ho, ho, ho. And if you want to be jolly and uh, have yourself a merry little Christmas with a, a merry little ugly Christmas sweater that says Magpul on it or a merry little Christmas hat, uh, check out our buddies at Brown Owls. We, we dropped the, the link in the, the linkages in the show notes, right? Yeah. All right. Yes, indeed. Support our buddies at Brown Elves because they support us. And make sure that when you do that, you let them know. Let them know. Say, hey, soon to the gun sent me. And they'll be like when you go to tour the uh, pro shop in Grinnell, they'll give you a free cup of coffee if you ask. Didn't one of our people do that recently? Oh, uh, I don't know. I think one of our people did that recently. They, they took a picture of themselves holding a cup. and They're like, look, I got it. They're so nice there, though. They're they're like the nicest people. If you walked up and said, hey, student of the gun says I could get a complimentary cup of coffee for mentioning them, they'd be like, okay, sure. You know, we're just screwing with you. <laughs> they'd be like, I know where the coffee is. It's right around the corner. You, you go in and you take a left, and you get, that's where the coffee thing is. So, I know where it's at. <laughs> Uh, thank you to Brownells for being students of the gun. All right, moving on. Uh, Duracoat, why? Because life is too short to have an ugly gun. It is. It certainly is. And, and I don't want to have an ugly gun, and you don't want to have an ugly gun. Mm. But I do want to have an ugly Christmas sweater. But you don't want to have, yeah, you can have ugly Christmas sweater, no ugly gun. You know oh. what I did with my Gladius? Umana, please, from hold on. I need you to... Make an ugly Christmas sweater AR. So you're going to take the design that is on an ugly Christmas yeah, sweater, your anything. favorite one, and I want you to transpose that onto an AR, please. Yeah, please. get it done. And 
I was going to say, you know what I did to my United Cutlery Gladius sword, my gladiator sword? I actually ordered a Dura Metal. I ordered a Dura Metal color uh, from our buddies at Brownells. Not Brownells. Our buddies at Duracoat. And which Dura Metal did I use? I can't remember. Let me see. Uh, it's a bronze. Okay. Yeah, the it's uh, the uh, the bronze the the Maryland Bronzen. So all the names are like are spoofs of like Gray Sabbath instead of Black Sabbath. Bronzy Osborne, maybe it was Bronzy Osborne. Yeah, that's what it was. It was Bronzy Osborne. So I took my Gladius and I bronzed the blade with the Dura metal, so that it looks like a bronze sword. Uh, and you could do that too. You could do that too, if you went to Duracoat Firearm Finishes. If you want a a firearm finish that is super unique, uh, and will be the envy of all of your bros, uh, check those guys out at DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see. Yes, yes, indeed, it is time for you. If you want the coolest Christmas present of all, if you want a free gun for Christmas. All you got to do is go to SOTG, Sierra, Oscar, Tango, Golf, Giveaway.com. Sign up. You could win a shotgun. We're giving away a 12 gauge shotgun. And if you go to SOTG Giveaway uh, right now, SOTG Giveaway.com, you will see a full color image of the shotgun. It's the SLB X3 HD. It has hardwood furniture, which I think really looks snazzy. I kind of dig the hardwood furniture on that. Uh, I was looking at the at the other day. I was like, mm, kind of like that one. It's kind of OG. You know what I mean? It's kind of OG. So, Ugh. yeah, that's right. So uh, that's available right now. Well, it's available if you sign up for the giveaway. So there you go. Man, how awesome would it be to win a shotgun for Christmas? For Christmas. I, mean, I want a shotgun for Christmas. All right. So uh, I guess, Zach, are you ready to let people listen to you? ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You should do that. I want you to do that. Why don't you do that? There you go. You, this give, is it away, you say, give it away. Give it away. No. You say, sir, no excuse, sir. There you go. Sir, no excuse, sir. All right, every single week... Every single Wednesday, we do this little thing called the Student of the Gun Homeroom. Get it? Student, homeroom, education, Student of the Gun University, professor. It all works together. And it's brought to you by our good buddies at CrossbreedHolsters.com. If you go there to their official website, if you go to Internet.com and uh, go to the Crossbreed website and you use the promotional code, what is it? What's the promotional code? SOTG. That's right. Sierra, Oscar, S -O -T -G. Tango, Golf. G. You're going to say Sorry, Ryan posted a, a, a gif of Kevin from the office dropping chili all over the office <laughs> floor. And it's just playing over and over in the Discord channel and it's just distracting me. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. So, uh, oh, Brett Loy says, I saw an ugly Christmas sweater where it, the, the stitching spelled out Epstein didn't kill himself. Uh, <laughs> that's classic. That's classic. All right. So, uh, what are we going to talk about this week on our student of the gun homeroom? Well, it's always about being dangerous on demand. So let's play the music and then we'll talk about being dangerous on demand.
Boom, 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 boom. Yes. And Zach, did you see that Brett Loy said that you have a sensitive stomach and you should take that with food? Don't take it on an empty stomach. Good to know. Good to know. And that will happen with other things. If you take medicines on an empty stomach, they'll upset your stomach. Just recently, just recently, the NRA's uh, ILA, America's Freedom First, and we've we've been saying for what, basically since we turned these microphones on, that the most important part of the NRA is the ILA. ILA. The Institute for Legislative Action. Um, and they have a, they got a website called America's First Freedom.org. It's an NRA website. And they published an article on November 30th. Charles C.W. Cook published it. He said, the truth is out on and, constitutional carry impact. And this is a massive article. I found myself reading it when I was tired, and I was like, I need to wait until I sleep to read the rest of this because I didn't realize how long it was when I started reading it. Mm -hmm. And this was on Tuesday, November 30th, 2021. The truth is out on constitutional carry's impact. There's an old Monty Python sketch in which a theatrical radio narrator desperately tries to make an exceedingly boring story sound suspenseful and melodramatic. June the 4th, 1973, the voice says, was much like any other summer's day in Peterborough, and Ralph Mellish, a file clerk at an insurance company, was on his way to work as usual. When, da -da -dum, nothing happened. <laughs> The story of the widespread adoption of permitless concealed carry, broadly known as constitutional carry, has been similar in nature to the tale of Ralph Mellish. That's a really cool um, connection to draw there. I yep. didn't really think that. Despite endless attempts to turn the development into a, a Wagnerian. Wagnerian. Opera, I don't know what that is. Uh, a Wagner. Wagner is. is oh, a, Wagner. Opera. A, a Wagnerian opera. Wagnerian opera. Okay, it makes sense now. We are now reaching the point at which nearly half of America's 50 states have nixed their carry permitting requirements, and still, da -da -dum, nothing has happened. Da -da -dum. Yes. There has been no associated spike in related crime in these states. There has been no increase in armed confrontations. There hasn't even been a rise in the number of bureaucratic infractions. There have been no negative consequences at all but now more Americans can protect themselves until the police arrive. And yet each and every time a new state looks at to nix its permitting systems, the usual voices still cry disaster. And he forgot to put wild West in there. Oh, it's down there. Oh, it, as I oh. write, I didn't see that yet. No, morning. it's down there. The wild West it's in there. Okay. As I write, the Pennsylvania House of Representatives is considered adding Pennsylvania to the list of constitutional carry states. And in response, their Democratic Governor Tom Wolf is alleging all the same thing gun controllers have since the late 1980s. Has it been going on that long? Yep. Wow. All the way since Florida. Wild I will, West! Blood I will in oppose, the streets! Yeah. I will oppose any bill that reduces gun safety measures, Wolf vowed recently while describing the proposal as removing gun safety protections and making it easier to carry a gun. Okay, let's let's go ahead and put a pin right there. If you're in Pennsylvania and you are not actively taking steps and campaigning to get that piece of human garbage out of your state capitol, you're wrong. He has no business being in the state capitol. He's a communist. He's a piece of crap. He doesn't believe in freedom or the constitutional constitution or the principles upon upon which America was founded. He's literally a criminal governor. And I don't care what Tom Wolf says. Fornicate him. Uh, but going on. I have a on. question. Go What's on. to say that the Wild West wasn't an enjoyable place to live? See, see that's the thing is in what people. In Are the they basing Wild the West, Wild West off movies? I mean, it's movies. It's nobody nobody movies. that says that knows what it was like to live on the no, Wild West. No, they have West. no idea. Like, oh, when you were living in 1877, in what was it like? Tell me. Well, I read a book. Or no, you didn't. You sure it was a book? You sure it wasn't nothing? <laughs> Maybe I it was read a movie. A book? No, you the didn't. Good, the bad, and the ugly. I saw a movie. Oh, you saw a movie made in 1969, 1971, 1985 about what it was supposedly like 
in fill in the blank. And even, okay, let's, let's go and talk about wild west. We're here. I can, (laughs) um, even all right, the, uh, tombstone, right? Wider tombstone, so on and so forth. And you say, wow, man, that, I, I watched the movie Tombstone, and that was crazy. They were shooting each other all the time, and, and then they had the big fight at the end and all this stuff. And so, like, you realize that that movie that you watched that took 97 minutes was over a period, all those things took place over a period of three years. What? Yeah. So what you watched in 97 minutes actually took three full years to play out. When you watch the movie, you think that it was like a couple of weeks. What like do you they, think that they showed up and then bam, bam, bam. Next thing you know, Virgil's shot and, and Morgan's dead and, and Wyatt's getting revenge. And it was all like over a period of three weeks. Yeah. Wouldn't you think that if the chaos that's caused by Uh, And and I don't even know if I believe that chaos was caused by duels in the wild West. I think that they were mutually respected. It's, it's like people that are, that are through mutual battle. Now Mm -hmm. they respected each other enough to agree to do mutual battle. It wasn't just show up and pow, pow, pow. But don't you think that if we're going to use that as a, an example of something that causes chaos, don't you think that also something that would also be attributed to the wild West type era would be uh cities burning uh Mm -hmm. looters looting everything and stealing from people i mean isn't that the wild west too then no because you know what in the real wild west they had these things called vigilance committees they had these things called the citizens vigilance committee the citizens vigilance committee yeah so so what you're telling me is that cities burning and and looters stealing things is actually would be going back even further than the wild west i mean we would be degrading humanity down past that that's like genghis khan type stuff because in america up until recently up until current history you know when your people like oh wild west murder 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 if you and your homies just showed up in town and decided you were going to rob all the stores the citizens vigilant committee would shoot you into the ground and not feel sorry for you and not worry about your feelings. Well, we couldn't have that. You can't have citizens protecting the town. That's wild west. (laughs) And the truth is, Jared, the, the dual thing, that's a Hollywood concoction. There may be two three at the most historical incidents of that happening in the in the actual world uh one of the most famous ones was wild bill hickok yeah wild bills his actual duel was one it is it's it's actually the one that that the, everyone wrote about they wrote nickel novels and so forth and so that's why people in new york city thought that that happened on a regular basis in Kansas and mm-hmm. Arizona and Texas and so forth. But the fact of the matter is it didn't. Uh, it didn't because both parties understood that they could die. Yeah, it's like, see, see, that's why I'm not convinced that I don't agree with the dueling technique. Oh no! It's it's a good with technique that as a because platform because to, people are way more polite. Yeah, well, to and mind a, their manners, to agree to that kind of mutual combat, you have to. You can't just be a crazy person. Well, you could. No, no. But you also have to understand that you have to be willing to give up your own life to do something you, to you, affect yeah, another you, person. You have it's to interesting be in that mental position where you're like, okay, this is so important to me that I'm willing to risk my life for it. And see, that is where the, the thug criminal Democrat culture, that's where they'll always fail because they won't there. They claim that their convictions are really strong and you say, okay, if your convictions are so strong, meet me in the street. 
you bring a gun, I'll bring a gun, meet me in the street, and we'll see who wins. Oh, no. That, see, that's the Rittenhouse case. That's why they were so crazy upset over the Rittenhouse situation because somebody actually had the balls to stand up to them and not just let them do what they wanted to do. And that's got them all in a tizzy because but, the, I, the idea that someone would actually stand up and stand in front of them at, with a gun and say, no, you can't just do this. You're not allowed. We're not going to let it happen. Well, but he shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't. But have you have to let life. it happen. He had no reason to be there. He had no reason to be there. Like the busloads of looters who showed up to burn the city down. All those idiots running around burning down the city weren't from there. It's there's a puffy coat may may about that. Yeah, I didn't expect to go down this rabbit hole, but I but, did see recently that the uh, I think it was the guy that we had put the video on who was essentially threatening the jury. I believe that they arrested him. Oh, the the reporter who was tailing no, no, the no, jury? no, not the not the oh, reporter. Oh, the, 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 the George Floyd's George Floyd's nephew. Yeah, I don't even know if that's true, but the guy that is Whatever. supposed George Floyd's nephew. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I saw a story floating around, and I haven't got to confirm this yet. So that's where I'm asking you guys to make sure you confirm this information. Um, Zach, if you could actually do that real quick, what am if you I could uh, search it up. I don't remember the guy's name, but it was the the video that we had posted where the guy's like, "Oh, well, uh, we, we need justice for are. yeah, we know who you are." They got video cameras and cameras in those courtrooms, and and uh, we know who the jury is. Remember so that you, video? You better do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. So you oh, better yeah. do the right thing. That guy, I believe that he was arrested for communications with the jury or communicating with the jury, which is essentially communicating jury threats. Yeah. Communicating threats. It should have been communicating threats. It should have been. Uh, uh, but anyway, so let's get back to this. So uh, uh, Charles C.W. Cook points out the fact that right now, as the pen is, as the ink is drying on the paper, that 21 of the 50 states are permit less. And I don't like that. Do you know why I don't like that? Like what? The term permit. Oh, the term permit. Yeah, because it assumes that permit is the default state is the standard yeah it assumes that that permission is the standard and that to not have permission is unusual or strange whereas it should be the exact opposite if you're going to live as a citizen of a, a republic of a free nation you shouldn't have to ask permission for your rights it should be the opposite the permit states people should be looking at the permit states and saying What's up with that? Not yeah. the well. Since we got the uh, Wild West discussion out of the way, I'll go ahead and read yeah, that quote now. Not the Wild it was, West. of course, always far fetched that when faced with the resolution of their rights, a restoration of their rights, Americans would turn their cities into the Wild West. But at least those who were making such predictions could point to the novelty of widespread concealed carry as a justification for their concern. That was the mid nineteen seventies. Yeah. So but now, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, it's what I want. I want you guys to remember because those of you who are Jared's age and Zach's age, y you think, well, you know, you know, the the permit system. It was, you know, it was shall issue and and yada yada yada. No, what we had done is is as a country, we coming out of World War II, Americans were still of the mindset like my dad was that whether they're Democrats or Republicans, people in government all want what's best for the nation. They wouldn't purposely lie. They wouldn't deceive us. They wouldn't pass bills and laws to deliberately strip us of our rights and freedoms. No, it's, it's for our own good. You can't convince me that you can't convince me that, 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 you know, the, that the mayor or the governor or whatever, that they're doing that nefariously, that they're doing it selfishly, that they're doing it to strip people of their rights. That was the mentality of grandparents and great grandparents coming out of the World War II era was that the government is, is good because it cares about the people and it wants to take care of the people. And so we, as a country, we allowed 
these state governments to pass all of these and and it goes i mean it, it it goes all the way back to prohibition era it goes back to the you know it depending on which state you lived in I, i'm not going to try and go through all 50 states and figure out when they pass their concealed you know uh concealed weapons you know laws or you can't have a concealed handgun on you you can't carry one blah 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 yeah. well thinking uh, that government is good as flawed in the first place because it is government is people and I, I I could accept the argument that people are good, that people don't aren't do not default humans are not default by default evil. I could accept the argument that humans are by, by default good. However, when you start giving people power over things that are thousands of miles away from them and they don't know, so conceptually this thing sounds like a great idea on paper. Well, you enact it and you don't see the effects of that thing negative or positive because you're not actually in that local community then it does just doesn't make sense to do that kind of stuff well it's also disingenuous to say well you know they're 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 banning concealed carry of firearms but that's a good thing because that'll keep people safe no we already had a thousand years of history which showed that every tyrant in the history of in in recorded history i wrote a little book called examining the armed citizen and we go all the way back to feudal japan we go back to colonial england the the default the de facto default of every ruling government whether it's a shogun or a king or a czar or whatever here on planet earth was first thing you do is you disarm your enemies First thing you do is you disarm anybody who could oppose you. And that that is the history of mankind, whether it's Russia, China, Africa, Japan, whatever. England, that was one of the first things that England did when it when they colonized. They went to these different countries and then some people in those countries that they colonized are like, hey, we don't like that. And they're like, oh, here's a writ from the king that says you must surrender all your swords. You must surrender your spears. You must surrender your crossbows. You must or whatever. Um, you know what I read recently, Jared? That the the you know who the Montagnards were? No. Okay, the Montagnards were the Central Highlands tribesmen in Vietnam. How do you spell that? Uh, it's Montagnard. It's M O T A G N A R D. I think Montag. It's like Montagnard or something like that. Okay. Um, that the, see, in the Montagnards were, they weren't the uh, traditional blood Vietnamese. They, they were considered to be a third class citizens. They were considered to be, well, the reason I bring this up is because in Vietnam in the 1960s, the, the central, the government uh, in Saigon or, wherever the, the head government was. I don't know if it's Saigon or, or Way City or whatever. They passed a law banning the possession of crossbows hmm. by the Montagnard people. Montagnard means mountain man in yeah. French. So, And for those of you that want to research it, it is M-O-N-T-A-G-N-A-R-D. Yeah. The, the Montagnards were our, were the, our allies uh, in the fight against, fight against the Viet Cong and communism. And uh, the Military Assistance Command Vietnam, MACV, uh, they, they, MACV, MACV, they went in and they organized the Mountain Yard tribes. But I, I was reading a book about that, and it was interesting to me that even in the 1960s, when you hear of crossbow bands, you're like, yeah, the Pope, you know, wanted a crossbow ban in 1157 AD. No, because apparently that was their, that was their arm of choice. And, uh, the, the government told them they couldn't have them anymore, <laughs> which was a mistake. Uh, just as an aside, if you read the history of the Vietnam conflict, the truth of the matter is, and this is hard for me to say, the communists deserved to win. Oh, how can you say that? Because the, the Vietnamese government was so corrupt and inept that 
they deserved to lose. The government of South Vietnam was completely corrupt, completely inept. They treated the people in the Central Highlands like second-class citizens, third-class citizens. They were constantly fighting amongst each When they should have been united fighting against the communists, instead they were fighting against each other. Sounds familiar. Does that sound familiar, Jared? Yep. That's funny. That sounds like a familiar theme. It's actually not funny at all. But No, it's not funny at all. But to quick call back, Zach, thank you for finding this article. It is indeed true. Minnesota activist Cortez Rice arrested in Wakusha County uh, for jury tampering. Cortez Rice, a Minnesota activist who falsely claimed to be George Floyd's nephew. Okay, so now we know. Oh, so he, he's the one who started that rumor. I didn't know that. It wasn't red MAGA hat wearing racist that, yeah. that started that. He started it. And this is from TennesseeStar.com. He is imprisoned in Wakusha County, Wisconsin for jury tampering. Um, it says, Crime Watch Min Minneapolis, MPLS. Uh, this is a tweet. It says, we're told Cortez Rice has been arrested on warrant in Wakusha County, Wisconsin for jury tampering. Remember, while he was at Judge Regina Chu's residence, he made a video about Rittenhouse jury. We have verified that he is on the jail roster in Wakusha County. Um, the Minnesota Sun reported that Rice caused a disturbance on November 6th in the Minneapolis Loring Park neighborhood when he tried to intimidate the judge presiding over the Kim Potter trial. As reported by the Sun, Rice took videos of himself going to what they believe was Chu's apartment door, saying, we just got confirmation that this is her house right here, just waiting for the gang to get up here. Well, confirmation from who and who's the gang? Uh, according to Crime Watch Minneapolis, Rice was arrested in Wakusha County on a warrant from Hennepin County in Minnesota. Rice appeared to suggest that he knew someone in the courtroom in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial when he took pictures of the jurors. Um, Antifa Watch shared. The reporter... Okay, so Antifa Watch says... Um, Cortez Rice, a Minneapolis BLM activist, has reportedly been arrested. Oh, that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So the reporter warrant, the reported <laughs> warrant in Hennepin would suggest his involvement in tampering with different with a different jury there. At this point, it's unclear which jury member he is being accused of tampering with. So when he was standing outside that door saying, we know that she's inside here, it's too bad that she didn't pull a uh, Joe Biden oh <laughs> if you're scared just point the shotgun at the door and fire two blasts yeah. just point it at the door fire two blasts we know that now that if you do that and you claim the joe biden defense that you actually will get off you're like that's not true actually it is <laughs> actually after he said that you guys are like he never said that yeah he did the vice president who's now the president well, the the false president um, went on TV and said and told America to commit felonies. Yeah, well, here we go. It says, <laughs> as reported by The Sun, George Floyd's aunt told Alpha News that Cortez Rice was sent a cease and desist letter in 2020 to make him stop claiming to be Floyd's nephew. So ah. he was, that's that's insane. This dude who is a so he quote -unquote started leader it. in the BLM movement wanted to be held as held in high regards because he was the nephew of somebody that uh, of a criminal of a dead good criminal lord i'm yeah. the nephew of a dead drug addict criminal it's crazy congratulations to you so and, yeah and it says on monday cortez rice was in route home um when it was pulled over for allegedly speeding during the traffic stop the officer informed him that he had a warrant issued for Hennepin county Minneapolis. That was issued on a, on November twenty fourth. The warrant was for communication with jurors. Mm. Well, there you go. All right, let's jump in back into the story. Yo, oh, yeah, back uh, says. But now in twenty twenty one, with thirty years of evidence to rely upon, these claims are absurd. At the point, at this point, we know that respecting concealed carry does not cause problems. At this point, we know that demanding the permits be granted automatically to the eligible shall issue does not cause problems. And at this point, we know that abolishing the permitting system completely does not cause problems. And yet, the carpers carp. <laughs> and still, some of our governments try to put free people through the ringer in service of uh, mere superstition. But why? 
The only plausible line of argument against constitutional carry would be that it increased crime. If it does not increase crime, and we know that it does not, the argument fails or it falls apart instantly. Constitutional carry, remember, does not alter who is eligible to carry a gun and who is not, nor does it alter the criminal penalties that are attached to violations of the law. It merely removes the obstacles in front of those who were never a problem in the first place. That's right. It's not about criminals, and it it's never about has been. It's about money, and it's about control. And with some it's of these people, you can argue that it's about, about protecting the criminals. And it is about protecting their voter base. Uh, a permitting process that does nothing of use does not have other virtues that make it worth doing. That's Rather, right. those bureaucratic impediments become a superfluous time and money tax imposed upon the exercise of a natural natural and constitutional right. Exactly. I like the way this this person writes. They're so it, the, very well if, written. The, and we've been saying this for a long time now, but I wanted to take the the advent of this article coming out to talk about this. If you went to high school and you learned anything, if you went to high school, I don't know, more than 20 years ago, you probably learned about the state of the United States in the 1850s. In the 1850s, we had a United States that was divided. You had free states and you had slave states, right? And every, and of course, as you know, or you should know, back in the 1850s, the United States wasn't complete right? We weren't complete. We had a bunch of territories out with the, the whole entire American West was divided into these territories, the Oklahoma Territory and the Arizona Territory and the, this territory and that territory. And, the, and they weren't official states. And so slowly but surely, the citizens occupying those territories applied for state status. They applied for status as a legitimate state within the United States of America. And of course, at the time, uh, they were still dealing with the, uh, the issue of slavery. Because as you know, America invented slavery, and there was no slavery in the world until there was a United States. You know that, right, Zach? Did you learn I am that aware school? Of that. Yes, I learned. Yeah, that, that. and you know that, right, Jared? That in in the history of planet Earth, there was no slavery until there was an America. I'm being facetious, kids. This is when people are like, "What are you talking about?" They're, they're, they talk about slavery in the Bible. <laughs> like it goes all the way back to the beginning of time. It wasn't an American thing. Like, well, if you listen to people today. America is the only place in the world that ever had slavery. If you listen to people, you're like, no, it actually was like goes back to the beginning of time. Oh, okay. So what we were struggling with, though, in the United States was whether or not to admit this is the Kansas, Missouri thing, bleeding Kansas and, you know, and so on and so forth. There were factions that were actually physically engaged in combat over whether or not a state would be admitted into the union as a slave state or a free state. And so the United States was divided by, by that idea. Now, obviously, as history played out, slavery was abolished. Um, and if you, if you read your history, you'll know that as time was ticking on, they were, they were throwing in little anti-slavery laws here, like they stopped the importation of slaves. So the slave trade essentially ended. You couldn't import new slaves into the country. Only the ones who were already there could be. Only old and, slaves, so there's yeah, like an age limit. Yeah, it was like a grandfather clause and stuff. No, they, they kept making new ones because they procreated. But the, the fact is, is if, if you talk to an honest historian, they would tell you that minus the Civil War, that slavery would have come to an end in the United States anyway uh, because it was on its way out. But they're like, yeah, but it wasn't on its way out now. Because and Lincoln, people, Lincoln because, made it stop in 1861. I was like, because no, people's mindsets, like, 
they were evolving. It's like, why are, why are we doing this? Yeah. No, it, like, and this is inhumane. Why are we doing this? So the, the day the Civil War started, Lincoln passed the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing all the slaves in the South, right? Yep. No, he didn't. It was, in two, year, it was two years later. See, that's one of those inconvenient facts that people don't like to talk about. What are you talking about? Lincoln freed the slaves. Lincoln didn't. You know why Lincoln wrote the Emancipation Proclamation? Because the Civil War movement was failing in the North. Because they were rioting in northern cities over the draft. And the people in the northern states by 1863 were fed up with it. And they said, we don't want a part of this. Leave the South alone and let them be. But the so federal government was already invested. And they're like, oh, we're already invested in this thing. We can't just stop. So Lincoln came up with the Emancipation Proclamation. If the Civil War was fought exclusively to end slavery, that was the goal from day one. Why didn't why did he wait two full years to do the Emancipation Proclamation? Two yeah. Two years. Why did he wait two years to do it? If that was the stated goal from the outset. Good question. So we've gotten about, I would say, twenty five percent through this story that we're talking about on the American First Freedom America's First Freedom dot org. Okay. Uh, but well, we, we don't have, have come, to read it word for word. Yeah, we've come to the end of the show. So we've got to wrap it up. Those of you that have that are interested in reading this entire thing, uh, go to the show notes. There's it's linked in there for you. You just click the linky link and go over there. I would recommend reading the whole thing. There's a bunch of information in here, and I'm a fan of the way that uh, Charles C. W. Cook writes. Yes, he's a very well written person. So my the correlation that I am drawing right now on this day is what we are seeing is now think about it. look at the red map jared look at the map how many of those states that are constitutional carry also are run by democrats this is when you go uh not many not many how many of them that are uh may issue states are run by democrats Oh, you mean like New York and California and New Jersey and, and yeah. Who's pushing back against constitutional carry? Republicans or Democrats? Or, yeah, or not even bringing it up. Right. Uh, the So to draw a correlation back to something we talked about in the grad program last week, and if you're not part of the grad program, if you're not a member, go to getsotg.com. You can join it and listen to that episode. We had talked about uh, how like Aristotle and – and actually a lot of people in history of, but all the way back to like Aristotle, Plato, Socrates time frame, they had talked about how uh, cities were not good for the long-term sustainability of humanity. And so I did a little bit of research because I was listening to a different podcast and they brought up this fact. And I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. So the um, population of California is 39.51 million people. The population of the entire country of California is 38 million people. Okay. The country of Canada is 20 times bigger than the state of California. Mm. But yet there's 1 million, one and a half million more people in the state of California. And so it, it's interesting to me to, to see this kind of stuff because drawing the parallel back to Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, all these people that have that were long, 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 long time ago. And they noticed these, these trends where California is in, in this, you know, California wasn't in existent back there back then, but California is in the United States of America, which is uh, the most free country in the world, right? It's the, the citizens are the most free citizens in the world. However, you can see like Canada, for instance, the entire country is, uh, their citizens are not as free as ours. No. And if, as you see these, the states, individual states within the United States that are, that have so many people in them, and they tend to go the direction of countries like Canada. And then you look back at these, these writings that were written thousands of years ago, and you're like, wow, we've known this for thousands of years and we're 
we're still doing this? I mean, like what's wrong with us as humans? It's just fascinating to me. Yeah. So what I, I would say, and we'll go ahead and wrap it up right now, is consider the United States, consider constitutional carry, and consider how we have a nation divided between free states and slave states. And whether you want it, whether it's distasteful or you don't like that verbiage, whatever, it's it's reality. It's reality. And, and we are here again. We were there in 1850. We're back again. All right. We, tomorrow will be a Thursday, and a Thursday means a bonus hour. That means if you are a member of the grad program, which you should be, if you're not, you're messing up, go to getsotg.com, sign up, be here tomorrow, be here Friday. we got some good stuff. Until then, cats and kittens, remember, you're a beginner once, you're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.